not quite sure exactly where the fabric originated, but there are several hints. One is Dungri, India, where as early as the 17th century, they were creating a coarse cloth for workers, eventually called Dungri. There's the Genoans of Italy, who had a type of sailcloth that was fashioned into work pants. And there's Nîmes, France, where the cloth there was known as Serge de Nîmes. Not always, but very often, these various types of cloth were dyed blue, probably to hide dirt as much as anything. So we have blue jean from Genoa. We have blue de Nîmes, or denim, coming from Nîmes. But when we make it into pants in America, we end up morphing the garment into blue jeans. People don't necessarily think about how their blue jeans came to be blue. Historically, that's because of the indigo dye. Centuries ago, indigo was said to be worth its weight in gold. Competition for it was so fierce, Europeans actually called it the devil's dye. Indigo is, in fact, a weed. The process of turning indigo from this small green leaf into a dye is a very delicate process. So only the most skilled are, are able to do this. One of the neatest things about dyeing with indigo is the dye vat is green. It's not blue. And when you introduce a fabric like denim to the dye vat, it comes out green. And then as it oxidizes in our atmosphere, it turns blue. It is magic. Indigo dyeing is magic. In many cultures, indigo cloth has a spiritual importance. In Africa, the cloth is considered the next layer to the skin. It holds the person's soul, their spirit. Africans have had a long history of working indigo and knew the special process involved in making the dyeing and dyeing cloth. And of course, many African captives who became enslaved in the New World brought with them knowledge of how to extract the blue from the plant and how to fix the blue to fabrics. Indigo is one of the ways in which slaveholding became tied to the economic fortunes uh, of the colonial experiment in the Americas.